Okay, so I want to finish our topic today about the interpersonal relationship skills, and then I want to go on to another topic. In addition, I, I have a Shalom Bayes year. It's actually an intimacy year in my house once a week. Um, yeah, it's really nice. And it's a group of women that come together, and we have this woman come and teach us, right? Because, you know, it's not enough to just have classes before you're married. You can classes when you're married and with children, and then when you're 80, you hope to be going to these classes to constantly improve. And the class last night was, it's really an intimacy class, but then she's saying that intimacy out of the bedroom. And she was giving a whole class, which was funny. It was everything that we've been speaking about in this class, like totally. She gave it an hour, and we've been giving it in a series, so she obviously minimized it. But what I found um, surprising was, was the amount of questions that girls, the woman had, and um, her thoroughness and necessity to speak about it, she said, because enough with the divorces. She said enough with the divorces, and she was speaking about what the specific teacher, she said, what pushed her to go into teaching you know, women these topics. She said she had a couple at her house. They were married for a year. They were married for a year, and she was speaking about stonewalling. If we're familiar with stonewalling is, which is basically just shutting down the other person. And, and Dr. Gutman says, basically, you know, relationships can, can overcome cynicism. They can overcome even maybe even contempt. And he said when they're stonewalling, it's basically the end of the relationship, right? Because when you fight with someone, it's at least saying, I care enough about you to fight with you. And stonewalling is saying, and I won't even respond to you. So she said she had a couple at her house once where the husband was speaking to the wife, and she was just like this. And he's like, you know, can I, what, just tell me what is it that you want. Just like this. And this woman said she had to go and say, sweetheart, you have to speak to him, answer him what he wants. And she said they ended up getting divorced. And she said after that, um, she's just like, this stuff needs to get out there. Um, there was actually, I didn't watch it, but she quoted an experiment that was done, which I can never be that mother who did the experiment. But they were doing it, this study with relationships. When you stonewall in a relationship, Right? How do you feel when you know, you're know you talking to someone, they're just basically giving, if they're even looking at you, they're just looking at you like this blank stare, or they're just like not even looking at you at all, which we're in a generation where people are, it's one of my pet peeves. They're just like, you're talking to you like this. It's so rude. It's just so rude. And like, especially if you're married for a long time, you can get into that habit, because he knows I love him anyways. That's a lot of things that people say. If you're in a, not even married, if you're dating someone for a long time, he knows I love him, I just have to check my email. Right? It's not like that, right? People tend to think the more comfortable I get with someone, so the more free I can be. It should be the opposite, right? The more comfortable you get with someone, meaning the more you invest in them and the more you love someone, the more you want to invest in your relationship. So I want to get dressed up when you walk in the door, right? I want to show you that I actually care about you because I care so much about you. This is great um, visual to hold with you when your spouse or your roommate or your mother plug in the, the relationship, okay, into your life. But let's say we'll go with the spouse now. When your spouse puts his hand on the door handle, what is going through his mind? Is he putting his hand on the door handle saying, I'm home, right? Like, or is he putting his hand on the door handle saying, and what am I gonna face right now? I didn't take out the garbage, I didn't help enough at home, right? Or your roommate, and now she's gonna yell at me for you know not making my bed, or playing my music too loud. What are people feeling when they're tor turning the door handle? So back to what I was saying, so they were doing this study with stonewalling in relationships, what happens when a husband or wife or friend stonewall each other. But they did this one with children, which is fascinating. They had this baby under a year old, the mother was engaging the baby in conversation. He was like, ah, right? and the mothers are like, it's so fun to like watch from a distance of like, you sound like you're talking to a baby because you are. There's like, ah, oh, you're so cute. Right? And the mother was engaging in the baby. And the baby's like, ah, and like speaking, ah, like gurgling and doing all those noises. And they did cut. And the mother sat there like this. The mother was like this. And the baby was like, And the baby's like, <laughs> and the baby started going like this. It was like very uncomfortable. And then the mother's just like this. And then the baby tries to get attention. And it's like, and then eventually the baby just turns away and is trying to get out of the high chair. 
Isn't that, isn't that crazy powerful? I know, so I'm like, who's there, who are these mothers? You always see these like YouTube videos or like these, these studies that are done. You know, there's like this YouTube video I watched once of like this child chasing, being afraid of their shadow. Did you ever see that? I saw this when I was a kid, there's like this baby being so, they realized they had a shadow and the shadow was like following them everywhere. And they're like, ah! And like you saw like the mother was like taking the video. I'm like, which mother are these that are like filming you? Or like Charlie bit me, that famous like Charlie bit me. Like which mother is videoing when your child is biting your other child? Anyway, so, so having had this class last, last night and then being so, you know, inspired us to, yeah, you would think this stuff is basic. You would think it's basic to not point out the person's mistakes directly, right? Not to say, wow, you messed up again. Or why didn't you call your brother? You said you would call your brother, right? And so you would think that would be obvious. You would think it would be obvious to, before you criticize someone, to first just give them a compliment or let them know how great they're doing. Right, but it's not, and these are the little wear and tear things in a relationship that do exactly that. They wear and tear a relationship down. I actually want to tell you, Nicole. You asked last class, um, what or two classes ago, what happens when the other person is being the one that's criticizing? Was it you who asked? Someone asked, what happens if it's the other person who's criticizing? Right. Or what happens if it's the other person who's stonewalling? Stonewalling, okay, every, we can't go through all of it because we can speak about this forever. But what happens if it's the other person who's, who's criticizing? So there are many times, just they'll hopefully model your behavior. You speak in a certain way, they'll pick up on it, right? But we said, and I just want to stress this point, open communication. Not in the moment. Never in the moment. That's a rule in relationships. Never in the moment. Never when the guy's hungry. Never when he just finished a long day of work. These are just uh, chemical realities that our body have. Women have PMS. It's not like, oh my God, she's PMSing. Yeah, she's PMSing, right? That's women's bodies work that way, okay? Your hormones are adjusting, they're fluctuating, right? That's called a mood swing. Women's bodies do that, okay? So men, women also get hungry, I, I'm more mad like that when I'm hungry or cold or really, really either freezing, there's three times, um, actually really four, <laughs> or some miserable person, <laughs> when I'm really hot or cold, so we'll stick that into one, that's so when I'm really, really freezing or I'm really hot or I'm hungry or I'm really tired, I'm just like, you can't talk to me, I'm like, not functional, like, I shut down, hello, like, please leave a message, okay, so I'm manly like that, usually women can, like, deal with hunger more, men, it's chemically, these are just studies, I'm not giving you my opinion, okay, just chemically speaking, when they are hungry, like, nothing else is on their mind, like, just give me food, so don't speak to them when they're hungry, have a fruit, have a snack when they come in, right, so you would think these things would be obvious, but they're not, back to the criticism, what I was going to say is, so you can model the behavior. Open communication is always the key. That's what we said, right? Not in the moment. And um, you can always just you know, tell them, you know, I know you never mean to hurt me. There's something I want to talk to you about, that dreaded statement that men never want to hear. Um, you know, there's something I want to talk to you about. Um, you know, I know you would never mean to do it. Or I know you grew up that, that sarcasm is funny. I don't know if I said this in this class. Sarcasm is never funny. We, we grow up, and we're growing up in a very extroverted world where those sarcastic cool guys are the cool guys. It's not funny. The only time you can be sarcastic, the only time it's, time it's funny to be sarcastic is if you're sarcastic about yourself, right? Like, oh my God, did you see what I'm wearing? Or did you see what I did? You can be sarcastic about yourself. When you're sarcastic about other people, trust me, it's hurtful. It's never funny in a marriage. It's never funny when the husband says, ah, you're cooking again, put on the smoke alarms, or turn off the smoke alarms. It's never funny, it's only hurtful. The other person may laugh to save face, because it doesn't feel good, but sarcasm in relationships is poison, okay? So you may very well say to your friend, your spouse, your boyfriend, I know you never mean to hurt me, and you grew up with sarcasm, so you don't think it's like a big deal. I'm just letting you know, I use, obviously I, you is attacking. I feel very hurt when you do that. And he's like, really? But I'm just joking. I know. I know you would never hurt me. I love you. I know you would never hurt me, but I feel very hurt when you do that. And if he does it again, you can just say, and if you do that, maybe because you don't realize, because it's not your fault. You don't mean to hurt me. I'll just say one word. I'll just say like, ouch, or something when you do it. So you're aware. Like, ouch. 
right? And don't respond every time. You told him, he knows, right? And onward, but the open communication part. Um, this woman told me before she was giving a class, she, she has some, uh, this young couple for, for um, a Shabbat meal. And she asked the husband and wife, oh, I'm giving the Shalom Bayez class. If there's one piece of advice you want couples to know, what do you want them to know? You know what the husband said? The husband said, I want them to know that the first fight doesn't mean we're getting divorced, right? Like the poor guy, like he had a fight. Oh my God, Shana Rishona, the first year, there's so much emphasis on the first year in, with, in marriage, and there is. Speak to me about it when you're there. It's super important. Time you'll never get back. But there's so much emphasis. And oh my God, I messed up and we got into a fight. And he really thought like his wife was like going to leave him, right? So especially to men who have these fears or have these thoughts, like, I love you. It's not a big deal. We'll get through this, right? But I want you to know that I feel hurt. We left off. Give the person a great reputation to live up to. We already said that. But, but we mentioned that we are called... Am mamlacha kohanim, right? We are called, we are, we are, are, are princesses, right? We are meant to be queen. Hashem gave us reputation to live up to, right? And when we give people that same reputation, right, then they match up to that, right? They match up to that. I'm sure we've all had experiences in high school. If you were that kid who was that kid, so you made sure to be that kid always. You were that kid who constantly got in trouble. And you were that kid who called out in class. You were that kid who didn't bring his lunch or who didn't dress appropriately because you were labeled that kid. Give people that reputation to live up to. Use encouragement number twelve. Make the fall that make the fault seem easy to correct. Okay. Um, it's less daunting when you're giving criticism when you make it seem like it's not a big deal. Let's use the example of calling, right? So when you say, you know, I really appreciate you taking time to call. I wanted to share with you that I just feel like it's not enough time. And I feel hurt by that. I feel hurt. I know you don't mean to hurt me. I feel hurt by that. And again, thank you. If you're able to make it, et cetera. He can, all it can be, OK, this is being dramatic, but it can be all he hears is, I can no longer watch football, go out with my friends, or drink a beer. I have to like give my entire life to you, right? That can be all that he hears. Or any other example, if when you get into a criticism in a relationship, your mother, give me an example of something your mom would say to you. Why don't you ever clean your room? Why don't you ever clean your room? Any other thoughts? I could just hear my mom's voice every time I do something she doesn't like. Oh, Sam. <laughs> 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 and it's like, and what is it now? <laughs> right. When, when, how come you never clean your room, right? So obviously words to never use in relationships is always and never, right? They're very, two very strong words. You always do this. You ne Really, do I never do that? I didn't know that. I didn't know I never do that. <laughs> hmm? All right, so always and never keep that out of the lexicon. Um, but when you're, instead of saying you never clean your room, then you're thinking, oh my God, I have to stay home for the rest of my life and clean my room, which is like, it's not a big deal, honey. Do you mind just cleaning up those few pieces of clothing from the floor, right? When you give people encouragement, I remember I had toe surgery like six years ago. Um, I didn't know it was a big deal going into it because I didn't ask the doctor any questions because I was in a rush to get out of the appointment and I should have asked the doctor questions. I didn't know I had to be in a wheelchair for three weeks and then crutches for three weeks. It was, it was an interesting time in my life. Anyways, I had a screw, a huge screw coming out of my toe. Really, really long screw, okay? It was a hammer toe. And it was really, the whole thing was just painful. It should be a kapar, it should just be a tikkun. Rachel, thank you for that face. I, pre I feel the empathy. So, so it was, the whole thing was just really not pleasant for me. And someone came up to me, and the day was coming when I would, when I would go and get the screw out. Someone came up to me for the week before, and they said, you know, I don't want to tell you this, but I just want to prepare you. Because I just think it's important for you to know, I know someone who did the, the surgery to get that screw out. It's excruciating. It's so painful. If you, okay, I'm on like crutches. I couldn't move for like almost two months. And I had this like, just to look at my foot was like, it was, uh, ugh, okay? And she's saying, it's excruciating. 
I went for the, okay, for a week, I'm like sitting there in like trauma, and then pre-trauma, and I go to the appointment, and I misunderstood the doctor, clearly I need to work on my communication skills, or just learn Hebrew, um, and I go to the doctor, and as he's unraveling, he's like unraveling the wrap that was on it, and I'm saying to him, okay, so like, when you can, do, and I literally told my, I'm very dramatic sometimes, in my mind at least, and I'm like, I'm like, I've got, you can do this. It's just a Kedas Yitzchak, Yitzchak Avinu did it, you could do it. And I was prepared, I was like, this is my Kedas Yitzchak. Like, I prepared the Yitzchak when he almost got sacrificed. And as he's taking the wrap off, and I said, okay, just tell me when's it going to be over, he's like, oh, you're not getting it out today. Ladies, I kid you not. I fainted. I fainted. They brought me to my room in the hospital. My dad ran. He got me some Coke. He had poured Coke on me. I drank it. And I fainted. I was, so, I was so prepared for this momentous torture that was going to take place. It didn't, and just seeing, it was like the same time seeing my toe, hearing that I wasn't going to do it, I just fainted. I just fainted. And then when I actually got the procedure done, which was like two weeks later, it was just a checkup. And I was coming like two weeks later. It didn't hurt a bit. I didn't feel a thing. Surgery, this, she forgot to mention this woman who she knew did it like 20 years ago in a different country, and, and procedures have progressed since then. Society has progressed, and medicine has progressed. Okay, so they took it out. I'm like, that's it? It's like, that's it? I'm like, really? And I was like, shocked. When you make things a big deal, like you never call me, or, or, or just, I don't know what examples you use because every relationship is so unique of like, how come you dress that way, right? You just feel like, oh my gosh, so she wants to like convert me to like her dressing religion. Like you just feel it's so overwhelming, then people don't want to change. They're kind of like glued to their place because comfort is the best place to be, right? Because that's what they know. It's like, oh, it's not a big deal if you're just able to call me once, once more a week or just spend an extra 10 more minutes with me on the phone. Or when I say to change your dress, I just mean you literally have tomato sauce on all of your clothes. You know, maybe we can just buy you a few new shirts. It's less overwhelming. When you give people hope, when you give people like a vision, when you give your spouse or your boyfriend or your sister a vision of like, no, I don't mean that you always steal my clothes and never bar return them. I just mean when you took that skirt from me to break it down. There's a story, this boy was in the hospital and, and he wasn't doing well. And uh, the doctors were, the, the situation was like worsening and it was just like so painful. And it was hard for the family. And they basically saw the boy not making any progress. His teacher came to visit him one day in the hospital, and she sat there, and I mean, and she sat there, and when she came out, they just noticed on the monitor that the things went up, like things started going up. I said, okay, that's interesting. And they came back a second day, and she came back another day, and again, his, his condition started progressing. And they were speaking to the boy, and they said, how you doing? He said, I actually, I'm starting to feel better. And they spoke to the teacher, and they said, what do you tell him? What happened? Since you came, he started doing better. She's like, I don't know. I just, I just came, and I taught him his work. I don't know. And they spoke to the boy. They said, what changed? Like, what happened? They said, he said, well, my teacher came in, and she started catching me up on all the grammar work that I've missed in class. And she wouldn't teach grammar to a boy who's dying, right? You wouldn't teach grammar to a boy who's dying. That means she thinks I'm coming back, right? Just to when you give people hope, when you give people encouragement, it's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Don't worry. Our relationship's not ending. I'm not running away. You're not running away, right? And it makes it much easier to correct.